This is Candy with eyes to Jesus.blogspot.com and welcome as we continue on our study going through the whole book of Isaiah in the Bible. So today we're up to Isaiah 33. If you would like to follow along with me in the same Bible translation that I'm using, I read from the Young's Literal Translation. And you can uh, get this on Amazon, uh, you can just read it for free online at such places as BibleGateway.com, etc. So, but let's turn to Isaiah chapter 33. And uh, Isaiah chapter 33 is the very last of the woe chapters. So we are ending our woe chapter section here as we complete uh, studying chapter 33. All right, so let's begin. Let's get right into this. Verse 1 says, Woe, spoiler, and thou not spoiled, and treacherous, they that dealt not treacherously with thee. When thou dost finish, O spoiler, thou art spoiled. When thou dost finish dealing treacherously, they deal treacherously with thee. Now as we continue reading on, we see that the spoiler that this is referring to, and we also gather this contextually from previous chapters, is it's the Assyrians, okay? So, it's saying, woe to the spoiler, the spoiler being Assyrians, and thou not spoiled. So they were taking over other peoples. They were spoiling them, taking spoils of war, but they weren't losing, so they weren't being spoiled, right? And treacherous, and they dealt not treacherously with thee. So they were treacherous and taking over these other peoples and nations, even peoples that didn't do anything to them first. When thou dost finish... Oh, spoiler, thou art spoiled. So Assyria and their taking over all these peoples and lands would come to an end, and then they would be taken down, and they would be spoiled. When thou just finish dealing treacherously, they deal treacherously with thee. Judgment was to come upon Assyria. And then, of course, now we look back in history, and we see that that did happen. Okay, so verse 2. O Jehovah, favor us. For thee we have waited. Be their arm in the morning, yea, our salvation in time of adversity. So now the people of God are crying out, saying, Favor us, Jehovah. We're for you. We are waiting on you, Lord. Psalm 37, right? Wait on the Lord. Verse 3. From the voice of a multitude fled have people. From thine exaltation scattered have been nations. And gathered have been your spoil. A gathering of the caterpillar. As a running to and fro of locusts is he running on it. Set on high is Jehovah. For he is dwelling on high. He filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. So now we know that the two main peoples in this chapter is Assyria and Zion, which is the house of Judah here. Okay, verse 6. And hath been the steadfast of thy times, the strength of salvation, wisdom, and knowledge, fear of Jehovah. It is his treasure. Do you have salvation, wisdom, and knowledge? If you're a child of God, these are three attributes that you most definitely should possess. And then fear of Jehovah, because... God is all righteous, and he is a righteous God, and he brings judgment upon sins and all evil. So we should have a healthy fear of God. Okay, so verse 5, we see Zion being introduced. Now verse 7, Lo, there Ariel, they have cried without, messengers of peace do weep bitterly. Who is the they who have cried out? This is the Assyrians crying out in regards to the house of Judah. So they just, they took down the house of Israel. And they've taken down people all around the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And so now at this point, this was prophesied and hadn't happened yet. Now we look at it back in our history and see that it did later happen as prophesied. So now we see that uh, the Assyrians are now looking at the house of Judah. And they're saying, oh, they're Ariel. Now that's a word play in the Hebrew, which is really fascinating, okay? Uh, if we turn back a few chapters to Isaiah chapter 29, that says in verse 1, Woe to Ariel, Ariel, the city of the encampment of David. Add year to year, let festivals go around. So we see here that uh, verse 1 of chapter 29 tells us Ariel 
is another name for the house of Judah or for Jerusalem. Okay, and Ariel there in chapter 29, it comes from a Hebrew word which means the lion of God. And we went over that in some of our previous Isaiah studies. Now, here in verse 7, where it's low, quote, their Ariel, unquote, they, the Assyrians, have cried without. This is a play on a Hebrew word. This is a, a Hebrew word that has its root in Ariel, meaning the lion of God, but it's a slightly different word and a slightly different pronunciation in the Hebrew, and it means the valiant ones. So this is kind of a mocking thing. Basically, uh, Assyria is saying in regards to the house of Judah, oh yeah, Ariel, because they're the Lion of God, the people of God, but they think that they're so valiant, so they did a play in the words, and they changed uh, Ariel, the Lion of God, be into a slightly different pronunciation, which means the valiant ones, because like, yeah, they think that... Uh, that their God is going to protect them from us. Well, their God didn't protect their brother in the house of Israel from us. So it's kind of a mocking. So verse 7, Lo, their Ariel, they have cried without. Messengers of peace do weep bitterly. Desolated have been high. Okay, so now we have kind of a record, a boasting, you know, some of the lands and areas and some of the destruction that Assyria has done, starting in verse 8. Desolated have been highways. Ceased hath he who passed along the path. He hath broken the covenant. He hath despised enemies. He hath not esteemed a man. Mourned, languished hath the land. Confounded hath been Lebanon. Withered hath been Sharon as a wilderness. And shaking are Bashan and Carmel. Okay, so here we have, uh, so verses 7 through 9, you can basically say that was the Assyrian peoples talking, basically rehearsing their power and all these powerful peoples and lands that they've taken down and how their Ariel, yeah, sure, Jerusalem, you have, you have the same God that the house of Israel was supposed to have had, but we took down the house of Israel, so, and we've taken down all these other people, so you valiant ones, you think we can't take you down too? Okay, now we have God's response here, starting in verse 10. Now do I arise, saith Jehovah. Now I am exalted. Now I am lifted up. How is Jehovah exalted and lifted up? Because as we, as we have read previously, God sent prophets to the house of Judah telling them, don't go to Egypt to help. Don't turn to yourself or to your fellow man or other nations for help. I'm going to see you through. We know, you know that the Assyrians took down the house of Israel because I kept giving them a chance to repent and they didn't. But you have your chance to repent. Turn to me and trust in me, God told them. And he said, the Assyrians will not take you down. Okay, so verse 11, Ye conceive chaff, ye bear stubble, your spirit, fire devoureth you. So fire and the burning down of things that grow from the ground, that is a picture of judgment, saying that Assyria gets their comeuppance, they get their judgment, and they did. Verse 12, and peoples have been as burnings of lime, thorns as sweepings, and with fire they burn judgment upon Assyria. Verse 13, Hear ye far off that which I have done, and know ye near ones my might. So in other words, God saying, Behold, I sent my prophets telling you that even though the house of Israel fell to Assyrian captivity, the house of Judah would not fall to the Assyrian captivity. The odds were, were totally against the house of Judah. They should have completely fallen to Assyrian captivity, but they didn't because they had God's protection. Verse 14, Afraid in Zion have been sinners, seized hath trembling the profane, who doth dwell for us, consuming fire, who doth dwell for us, burnings of the age. So the sinners in Zion, those people that we previously read about, who they were trying to run to Egypt for help, they were trying to turn to their fellow man for help, because they didn't believe the prophets, they didn't trust in Jehovah God. So those were sinners, and they were seized with trembling. They had a lot of anxiety. Okay, but what about the righteous, those who did trust in God? So verse 15, Whoso is walking righteously and is speaking uprightly, kicking against the gain of oppressions, shaking his hands from taking hold on a bribe, stopping his ear from hearing of blood, and shutting his eyes for looking on evil, 
So we got a description. So the righteous, these are ones who trust in Jehovah and believe in Jehovah God. But not only that, the righteous, and this goes for us today, the righteous isn't just someone who's like, yeah, I have good thoughts and I don't sin. It also means that we stand up against sin that harms others. So kicking against gain of oppressions, we are to stand up against those who get their gain from oppressing others. Shaking his hands from taking hold on a bribe, we righteous, we don't take Take bribes, nor do we support those who take bribes. Stopping his ear from hearing of blood. So we want nothing of gossiping or of murders or being a part of people killing people. And shutting his eyes from looking on evil. So, you know, Job talks about how he made a covenant with his eyes that he would not look upon a maiden. Um, in the New Testament, read about where Jesus tells us that we're supposed to keep our eye pure. So we need to be careful what we look upon. What are you looking upon? <clears throat> Are you looking at pornography? Are you watching other people sin and taking joy in their sin? So these are things for you too. You're supposed to shut your eyes from looking on evil. So even if you're not a partaker, if you're looking on it, it's like you are a partaker. That is an unrighteous act. Verse 16. He high places doth inhabit. Strongholds of rock are his high tower. His bread hath been given. His water is steadfast. A king in his beauty see do thine eyes. They see a land afar off. So the righteous, we see the coming king of the ultimate new Jerusalem, which will be coming down out of heaven onto the earth at the site where Jerusalem is now. And this happens in a little over a thousand years from now. So we look upon, as uh, the New Testament tells us, the country afar off, the ultimate promised land. Okay, so now, verse 18, we turn to personifying the Assyrians again. So the Assyrians, verse 18, thy, the Assyrians, heart doth meditate terror. Where is he who is counting? Where is he who is weighing? Where is he who is counting the tower? The strong people thou seest not, a people deeper of lip than to be understood, of a scorned tongue there is no understanding. So the Assyrians, they bring terror. They, they, they don't see anyone standing in their way. No one is standing up against them. They don't see any strong people. They just see victims being taken down. They take down even foreigners. They don't even speak their language. Verse 20, See Zion, the city of our meetings. Thine eyes see Jerusalem, a quiet habitation, a tent not taken down, not removed are its pins forever, and none of its cords are broken. So verse 20 through the rest of this chapter, this is now going into future unfulfilled prophecy. This is prophecy that will be fulfilled in a little over 1,000 years from now. This is referring to New Jerusalem. New Jerusalem, when New Jerusalem is established on this earth, will be established forever. It will never be removed. So it continues talking about that here in verse 21. But there mighty is Jehovah for us, a place of rivers, streams, broad of sides, no ship with oars doth go into it, and a mighty ship doth not pass over it. In other words, it will never be besieged or taken over. No one like how the Assyrians took over the house of Judah. No one will take over New Jerusalem when it is here. Why? Verse 22, for Jehovah our judge, Jehovah our lawgiver, Jehovah our king, he doth save us. Verse 23, left have been thy ropes, they strengthen not rightly their mast, they have not spread out a sail, then apportioned hath been a prey of much spoil, the lame have taken spoil, nor doth an inhabitant say, I was sick. The people that is dwelling in it is forgiven of iniquity. These are the promises, just some of the promises of New Jerusalem. And only nations of the saved will walk in New Jerusalem. We can see a little hint and some more detail about New Jerusalem if we turn to Revelation chapter 21. And let's just look at verses 1 through 7. And that says, and I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth did pass away, and the sea is not any more. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of the heaven, made ready as a bride adorned for her husband. 
And I heard a great voice out of the heaven saying, Lo, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will tabernacle with them, and they shall be his peoples, and God himself shall be with them, their God. And God shall wipe away every tear from their eyes, and the death shall not be any more, nor sorrow, nor crying, nor shall there be any more pain, because the first things did go away. Verse 5, And he who is sitting upon the throne said, Lo, new I make all things. And he saith to me, Write, because these words are true and steadfast. We're now reading what he wrote. Verse 6, And he said to me, It hath been done. I am the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I, to him who is thirsting, will give of the fountain of the water of life freely. He who is overcoming shall inherit all things, and I will be to him a God, and he shall be to me the son. Son there being gender neutral, meaning a descendant or a child or an adopted child. So this is where we wrap up our study on Isaiah chapter 33, and this chapter is a fabulous end cap chapter for wrapping up the woe section of Isaiah. I hope you will join me for when we do our next Isaiah study of Isaiah chapter 34, and have a blessed day.